Good evening. Welcome to the, what date is it? May 16th? Is that May 16th? Yes, it is. It's May 16th. Welcome to the May 16th City Council meeting. I call the meeting to order. And we have some special guests with us tonight. We have KK and Wendy. Would you please come forward? And would everybody please join us in the Pledge of Allegiance? I pledge, I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Okay. Now, you two stay up here, okay? KK and Mute and Wende. Sorry. What school do you go to? Westwood. Come a little bit closer just to the microphone. There you go. go to Westwood. There we go. Okay. You go to Westwood. And KK, what grade are you in? I'm in fifth grade. Fifth grade. And Wende, what grade are you in? First grade. First grade and fifth grade. And do you have a favorite subject? I like math. And how about Wendy? Math. Math. You both like math. And you told me that you do something special after school sometimes to practice your math. What do you do? Math tutoring. You go to math tutoring just so you can be even better at math. That's really cool. What do you do after school? You take do, some lessons? Yeah, and I do soccer and uh, programs at the Family Resource Center. Very good. And Wendy, what do you do? Do you play soccer as well? I, play, I do soccer and ballet, and I also go to programs at the Family Resource Center. Okay, so soccer and ballet and Family Resource Center, which is fun to go there. And who brought you here tonight? Um, my mom and dad. So your dad has the camera on us, so he's waving at us, and I'm going to wave at him. And mom, thank you for bringing them here tonight. And I'm going to come down there and give you just a little treat, and we're going to take a picture, okay? chocolate <coughs> one for you chocolate Thank you're gonna you. turn around right here you're welcome are you stand on one side of me or something okay. all right nice to meet both of you nice to meet you okay instead of coming back up there to say we have proc proclamations, I'll just start down here. And the first proclamation is for the Community Action Agency, so would the representative please come forward? Whereas the community action agencies were created when the Economic Opportunity Act of 1964 was signed into law, and whereas community action agencies have a 52-year history of promoting self-sufficiency for the limited income, and whereas community action agencies have made an essential contribution to individuals and families in Oklahoma by providing them with innovative and cost-effective programs, and whereas Community action agencies are needed as major participants in the reform of the welfare system as we know it. And whereas welfare reform in Oklahoma has benefited from the state's partnership with community action agencies. And whereas the limited income continue to need opportunities to improve their lives and their living conditions. Thus ensuring that all citizens are able to live in dignity. And whereas 
Oklahoma and the entire United States must continue to promote economic security by providing support and opportunities for all citizens in need of assistance. Now, therefore, I, Gina J. Noble, Mayor of the City of Stillwater, do hereby proclaim in Stillwater, Oklahoma, in recognition of the hard work and dedication of Central Oklahoma Community Action Agency, the month of May 2016 as Community Action Month. Congratulations. I'll let you have the microphone. I'd just like to personally thank this community for standing behind COCA through difficult times. It has been wonderful to see the support that's coming back on board with us, and I appreciate everyone standing behind us. Thank you. Thank you. Would you like to take a picture? <laughs> Would you take a picture? How about that? <laughs> Is that better? <laughs> well, here's your proclamation. Thank you. Okay, next we have the distinct distinguished young women of Payne County representative there we are whereas the distinguished distinguished young women of Payne County scholarship program is held each March to honor high school junior young women in Payne County this countrywide scholarship program recognizes rewards and encourages excellence while promoting self-esteem among these young women. The 17th annual Distinguished Young Women of Payne County program occurred on Saturday, March 7, 2016, with eight Payne County high school juniors participating, four from Stillwater, one from Perkins, one from Yale, one from Cushing, and one from Glencoe. Whereas, Ms. Anna Teresa Attilis daughter of George and Julia Attilis of Stillwater was selected as the Distinguished Young Woman of Payne County for 2017. And whereas, by being selected the Distinguished Young Woman of Payne County for 2017, Miss Attilis will be involved in community service, speaking engagements around Payne County, performing at various events, and presenting the Be Your Best Self message of self-confidence and commitment to Payne County school children. She will encourage young people to make a commitment to do their best to be involved. Be studious, be healthy, be ambitious, and be responsible. It includes, but is not restricted to, encouraging young people as they face the challenges of dealing with negative peer pressure and avoiding the perils of the abuse of alcohol and other drugs. Whereas, by being selected as the Distinguished Young Woman of Payne County for 2017, Miss Attilis is automatically entered into the Distinguished Young Women of Oklahoma Scholarship Program to be held July 20th through 23rd, 2016 in Bartlesville. Miss Attilis will, com will compete for the Oklahoma state title in the categories of fitness, interview, self-expression, talent, and scholarships. Now, therefore, I, Gina J. Noble, Mayor of the City of Stillwater, pro proclaim the 16th day of May, or today, as Anna Teresa Attili's Day. Congratulations. And we also wish her good luck. And would you like Thank to you say so a few words? I would just like to thank the city of Stillwater for supporting the Distinguished Young Woman program because it definitely supports all of the high school girls in, in their endeavors and definitely has given me lots of confidence. And I know that if I didn't live in Stillwater, I wouldn't have had these opportunities. So I'm really excited to give it back to the community through my endeavors as Distinguished Young Woman of Payne County. So that's all I have. Thank you. Thank you. Ha, <laughs> ha, 
And the public works. Matthew? Whereas public work services provided in our community are an integral part of a citizen's everyday lives, and whereas the support of an understanding and informed citizenry is vital to the efficient operation of public work systems and programs such as water, sewer, streets and highways, public buildings and solid waste collection, and whereas the health, safety and comfort of this community greatly depends on these facilities and services, and whereas the quality and effectiveness of these facilities, as well as their planning, design and construction, are vitally dependent upon the efforts and skills of public works officials, and whereas the efficiency of the qualified and dedicated personnel who staff public works departments is materially influenced by the people's attitude and understanding of the importance of the work they perform. I, Gina J. Noble, do hereby proclaim the week of May 15th through 21st, 2016 as Public Works Week and call upon all citizens and civic organizations to acquaint themselves with the issues involved in providing our public works and to recognize the contributions which public works officials make every day to our health, safety, comfort, and quality of life. And thank you for what you do. And I know that this week is Public Works Week because of this, but also because you're visiting elementary schools this that week. That is correct. Okay, I'll let you tell a little bit about that. With our efforts in Public Works Week, just to kind of get familiar with the public, we like to take that opportunity to go to each and every elementary school that we can that can fill all of our trucks and units and give our, the kids an opportunity to come and see and ask questions and educate the public as much as we can. We like getting the information to kids is really great. They love it and it's helpful for the schools and us and something that we're really proud of and like to take the time to do every year. And uh, that's the most important thing is to try to get that education to the public and that's what we like to do and I appreciate it. I like it when you have the trucks out in front of here. Oh yeah. <laughs> <laughs> that's we're like an elementary school. I, yeah. <laughs> it's, this week is called Touch a Truck Week, yeah, right? That's correct. Yep. We didn't get to do it today because of so the right. rain, but we will be where tomorrow? Tomorrow we will be at uh, Skyline Elementary. Um, Wednesday we will be at Highland Park. And Thursday we will be at Will Rogers. And then I Friday? Friday we wrap it up with a little celebration at Strickland Park. So. Okay. okay. Awesome. All right. Great job. All right. Thank you so much. Thank you. Here you go. Okay, thank you for everybody for being here. That takes us to the consent docket. Oh, I'm sorry. Before we go to the consent docket, we need to do the uh, presentation for the American Public Works Association and Charlotte Charla is doing that presentation. Thank you. Hello, good evening. Uh, I actually have Paul De DeAndre from AP APWA president for Oklahoma. He's here today to give these awards um, since it is the city and I am chapter secretary but I didn't want to present those awards, right? So uh, we have him here and a presentation that we gave at the APWA conference in uh, just early May. Oops. 
Come on. Maybe. Hi, thank you. Uh, as she said, my name is Paul DeAndre. I'm the uh, Oklahoma president uh, of APWA, American Public Works Association. For those of you that don't know, we're a group that is made up of public works professionals, consultants, and contractors who work in the public works arena. Our main goal is to advocate for, uh, educate about, and promote public works and public works professions. So we're very involved in National Public Works Week. I love hearing about getting out to the schools, teach kids, because you know it's it's great line of work it, uh, there's there's a lot of different jobs in public works that a lot of people don't realize and they can be great lifelong careers so we, we really enjoy hearing that uh, one of the ways we do uh, promote public works profession is we give out annual awards uh, through both the Oklahoma State chapter and the national uh, organization uh, and uh, we have uh, over 50 different awards uh, that are available uh, this year we gave out four so uh, they really want to encourage everyone to uh, promote uh, people and for and projects for awards. Uh, it's not just projects. What most of the submissions we get are about a project somebody wants submitted uh, for the award. Uh, but we have over half of the awards we have available are for public works professionals and team members uh, that just show exceptional service. Uh, so we really want to encourage if you if you know somebody in the public works department here in Stillwater that's doing a great job next year, uh, get their name out to us and we'd be happy to honor them too. Uh, the award we're here to present tonight is to the city of Stillwater. Uh, they are our silver winner uh, this year for a transportation project less than five million dollars. Uh, the project in question was the Sanger Road Bridge. Uh, it's a pony trust bridge just north of of sixth on Sanger, a uh, historic bridge. They did a restoration on that. Uh, the primary contractor was Meridian Contracting. And we have Tyler Davis here tonight representing them. Uh, uh, Michael Stevenson with City of Stillwater and uh, Stacy Loeffler with BKL who were the design consultant on the job. If you guys wanna come forward, we'll, we've got a plaque to present. <coughs> Okay. Uh, Michael, come on in. <laughs> okay. They're all the same. So all the same. <laughs> we'll give you. Thank you. And just so that uh, you can see a picture online, or I guess we don't have it shown right now. Darn it. Missed my opportunity. You would see the orange bridge. There you go. So if you get down on the side of the bridge and take a look uh, facing northwest or yeah, looking northwest, that would be the view. But we had the drone up there, so we have great drone pictures that we'll get up on the website so you can see it from above. It's very nice. Thank you. Yeah. Congratulations. Yeah. Yeah. Okay, that takes us to the consent docket. So I will ask counselors, does anyone wish to remove an item for discussion or is there, well, actually if no one wishes to remove an item, I do have one request. Mr. McNichol, if it's okay, on the consent docket on item H, could you give just a little bit more ex explanation without me pulling it? Sure. Um. Catholic Church is building a uh, rather sizable new building, the corner of Country Club at McElroy, and that area of town is on a real water system. And they found themselves, because of the size of this 
uh, facility that they're building, which the, the drawings and the photographs are pretty impressive. Um, they needed an eight inch water line to supply the sprinkler system, the fire suppression needs. And uh, actually by state law and because of the flows in that area, we could not provide that uh, flow for that building. And after much discussion between the church and the city, um, the fellows in the water department came up with, they remembered that when OSU discontinued using uh, part of our system that there was a relatively new 10 inch line that runs the length of McElroy from Sanger and that that could do two things. One, it could serve the fire needs of uh, the Catholic Church and it would improve the pressure and flow issues on that real water system on up North Country Club because that area is bound to continue to develop since that new road is there. And we found this to be an absolutely beautiful public, private, and it's kind of different to call it church private, but they are, a partnership that uh, serves not only uh, the citizens of Stillwater, because part of that area is in the city limits, but uh, serves the church, and we we both get some value out of uh, this agreement. Okay, thank you for that explanation. Counselors, anything else, or is there a motion and a second? Motion to approve the consent docket. Second. We have a motion and a second to approve the consent docket. Please vote. And that is. <laughs> oh, sorry. Yeah. There we go. <laughs> the consent docket is approved with a vote of five to zero. That takes us to general orders. And Mr. McNichol, uh, item A. Consider the sale of city-owned property at 301 South Washington Street. Uh, Special Projects Director John McClenney will provide information on that. I will pull up a picture to show it to you. Okay, this is 301 South Washington. Wanted to see if the council was interested in selling this property. Uh, this is a parking lot currently that is just to the north of Fuzzies in, on the Strip. And the property was purchased in 2008. It cost us $475,000 at the time. The funds for the purchase came from the half cent transportation sales tax. It was purchased as right of way uh, so that Third Street could be punched through from Hester to Washington. The transportation project was dropped by a council vote on May 3rd, 2010. The reason being primarily from reading the report that the sales tax was not coming in at a rate that would support all the projects and needs that, that they had at the time, and so they recommended dropping that project. It's no longer viable in any way at all because OSU has since purchased property in there and is planning to build a performing arts center in the middle of where Third Street would have gone. So unless we're going to go underground, we're kind of not going to go through there anymore. <clears throat> uh, the property currently provides eight parking spaces. It is paved for that. The purchase price of the property at the time included a building. So the property, the building was torn down in anticipation of putting the road through. The property is not worth what it was when we bought it. More than likely, we will not be able to sell it for what we paid for it. A uh, couple of options is we can continue to use it as public, public parking. I did take this, uh, this issue to the parking steering committee, which is kind of charged with looking at the uh, the parking study that we did a few years ago and continuing to update and look at issues. They recommended that we go ahead and consider the sale of this because of a couple of reasons. The, the area already has a surplus of parking. I know it doesn't look like that at times, but it does. Uh, and in addition to that, OSU is building a 680 space parking garage along with the Performing Arts Center. 70 of those spaces will be open for public parking It'll be paid public parking, but it will be available. Uh, the other option is to declare the property surplus, sell it at public auction, and put the money back into the half cent transportation sales tax fund for additional transportation projects. And staff is recommending that 
we sell this property and put the money back into the half cent transportation sales tax. Uh, we'll try to answer any questions. Councilors? So really it's just, it's a, it's a parking, eight parking spaces. Eight parking so spaces. it's not generating any other funds for us at this point and not? No. Could they be paid parking spaces? They could. Could they be more than eight? <laughs> Maybe. I would have to see how wide that is altogether. It looks pretty small. It, 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 pretty at, tight. At most, it would be 16. So we could double it. 8 to 16? Fitting 16 smart cars in there? Yeah. <laughs> I know well, 16 of my trucks ain't fitting in there. If you could get 8 on one side and 8 on the other, if it fits, it would, it would depend on the total width. But You're going to make a lot of insurance adjusters mad. You're going to have a lot of backing accidents. Well, <laughs> keeping you busy. <laughs> Could we, does it have to go to transportation if we sold it? Well, the money came from, yeah. from the half cents transportation so tax, so it should go back there. It's dedicated, okay. Mm -hmm. I was just thinking maybe we could put it in the form-based code area, up with some improvements. Well, it could go to a street project in the form-based code area. Mm -hmm. Okay. Do we have any idea how much we think we're gonna get from it? I will have to have it appraised if we decide to go forward. The current assessed value listed on the Payne County Assessor's website is 211000 with the property and the improvements. We bought for how much? 475000 well, We lost the building was taken down. So. Come again? There was a building taken down. So that. Yeah. <clears throat> I just think no, it would be worth more right there. It may sell, <laughs> it may sell for more than that. Don't know. How that is it? prime property. I think anyone be, would jump at the chance to get that. We had a piece of property that we sold about three or four years ago that was uh, closer to 6th Avenue. It was just about one lot off the strip. It was 1,000 square feet, roughly. We thought it would sell for somewhere around 20000 It sold for 96000 so if that All gives right. you an idea. Didn't we just sell a lot in that area? That yeah. was, it was about three years that ago that we sold that one. If, if we approved this tonight and the appraisal came in really low, we would already have approved it. No, you just, you're just authorizing him to start the process. Okay. That we would go through an actual competitive bidding process to sell the property. And then I would come back for. And then if, if, if you got a price that you like, you could, you could approve it at that time. Okay. So it'll come back. Yes. Yes. Mr. McNichol, is there anything else? Well, historically, on the one of the problems in digging through references, there was an apartment, existing apartment building. This property was acquired first, and the idea was to acquire additional rights of way to punch Third Street, Third Street through. Um, and we ran into an issue with this apartment complex because had we purchased that right away, it would have diminished the number of spaces that they had available and it became a real issue. And it started to get what would have appeared to have been very, very expensive and probably would have entailed the, the purchase of that entire apartment complex. So, uh, the people at the time decided that they would back up. The building had already been destroyed, and hence the council's uh, vote back in 9, 09? 2010, 10? May 3rd. To uh, uh, cancel that project. And the Performing Arts Center has... Other, yeah. Sure. I move that okay. we move forward with County to surplus and starting the proceedings for that. So. Is that a motion? It's a motion. We have a second? Second. We have a motion and a second to count this property as surplus and ask staff to move uh, forward on finding out the value. Can I ask one more question before we Absolutely. Vote? Is it, I mean, I like the question about parking meters. I mean, how much do eight parking meters there? generate well it depends on what we decide to charge for parking um, actually next week 
we'll be bringing recommendations from the steering committee about parking downtown and one of the options is to look at at uh, a parking management system that would involve charging for parking so that might eventually lead to doing that in areas like Washington can we look at what might be generated from this lot kind of while we're going forward with sure the surplus you know so then we can at least look at numbers and see if it's worth keeping well, it would be roughly a dollar dollar a space per hour per car uh, between eight and five correct yeah one dollar dollar an hour dollar an per hour. if if <laughs> the Right, the future recommendation is um, considered. I think, you know, beyond parking meters, you could sell, I mean, you could rent those spaces for a monthly or quarterly or yearly. There's we could. definitely several options. I don't yes. know if we want to get into the... The, the steering committee recommendation... Yeah, I feel like you and I are thinking the, for 16, the same thing because yeah. we're staring at... For 16 like spaces. But I'm seeing another fuzzies or something right there. I mean, someone's going to buy this and, and build something right there. That, that was... Uh, yeah. We're going to utilize, right? I mean, yeah. I think we're going to have some competing... We're Americans. We want to park right <laughs> next to... <laughs> That's true. We don't have to walk Most of the members of the parking steering committee felt like this property would be better used as another business in that area. Well, if we can see the numbers. Yeah. Which we would hope would generate more sales tax collection yeah. than a dollar an hour per I, car. I said, I'd like, yeah, exactly. The, the Just so I make sure I've got it right, do you want to see the numbers on the appraisal before we go forward with the auction process or wait till we get to the end of that and then make a decision? So you're, you're going to go through the auction process and present us a number and we can say no at that point? Yes. If it's not high enough? I think we go forward. I'm fine with going forward and then and then also getting numbers on what we think we can generate revenue wise from a parking some sort of parking I could actually there. bring you that next week and then we probably. can just compare it when we get the number mm -hmm. on the bid and say yeah it's it's worth selling or, or not worth selling okay okay so I'm fine so moving forward on okay. are you clear yes Did we repeat that I am clear <laughs> <laughs> Are we clear? <laughs> uh, well, I think so. So we want parking numbers and we want a, uh, a value of the property and uh, we will discuss it after you bring that back to us, that information back to us. Okay. We have the Correct? We need to vote. Mm -hmm. We need to vote. Okay. So Just so I'm clear, the motion is to move forward with the auction process. So we had a motion and a second right. to move forward with the auction process. Please vote. And the vote, it is approved for the auction process with a vote of five to zero. I'll bring you some theoretical parking numbers next week since we're talking about parking anyway. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. That takes us to resolutions. Resolution number CC-2016-8. Mayor, could we hold oh. that item until the ordinance, second reading ordinance 3339? Absolutely. Tell me when I need to come back to that. Thank you. All right. Item B, resolution CC-2016-14. A resolution adopting the guidelines for processing tort claims and workers' compensation claims valued at less than $50,000. Mr. Dorman. This is the uh, resolution that will uh, establish the guidelines for processing tort claims and workers' compensation claims in accordance with the ordinance that you passed about uh, just right at 30 days ago. Okay, counselors, questions or discussion? Motion to approve. Motion approve or adopt? Approve. A approve. Second. We have a motion and a second to approve CC-2016-14. Please vote. And resolution CC-2016-14 is approved with a vote of five to zero. That moves us to item C, which is resolution number 2016-17, a resolution of the city of Stillwater nominating Marcy Lamb as a candidate to fill an open position on the Board of Trustees of the Oklahoma Municipal Retirement Fund, or OKMRF, 
representing District 5 for a five-year term beginning October 1st, 2016 through October 1st, 2023. Mr. Dorman. This is, the title is fairly self-explanatory. Uh, Ms. Lamb uh, would be representing the city of Stillwater for this five-year period. Uh, she is eligible to serve because she is a retiree of the city and is currently participating in the plan. And, and those are the requirements for uh, candidacy with regard to the, uh, the OKMRF. Okay, and I misspoke. It's 2016 through 2021. Sorry about that. Counselors, questions, discussion, or motions? Motion to approve. Second. With a motion and a second to approve CC-2016-17. Please vote. And that is approved with a vote of five to zero. That moves us to or ordinances. On first reading, Mr. Dorman. Ordinance number 3341, an ordinance amending the Stillwater City Code by amending Chapter 23 Land Development Code Article 25, Corridor Redevelopment Area Planning District by creating Section 23452, Petition to Annex into Corridor Redevelopment Area Planning District. Counselors, questions or discussions? This is one of the three ordinances that you reviewed at the public hearing about two, I guess it was two meetings ago. With mm -hmm. taking us a little bit of time to get these into <clears throat> form because they are in the form-based code section. Uh, this one would create the process to bring in properties that are adjoining on the mm -hmm. perimeter of the form based code area into the area itself. At their request. Yes, ma'am. Mm -hmm. Do we have a motion? Uh, motion. <coughs> Advance. Advance. Oh, the second oh. reading. Advance yes. to second yes. reading. Yes. yes. Second. We have a motion and a second to advance ordinance number 3341. Please vote. Ordinance number 3341 is advanced with a vote of five to zero. That takes us to item B on first reading, Mr. Dorman. Ordinance number 3342, an ordinance amending the Stillwater City Code by amending chapter 23, Land Development Code, Appendix 1, Form Based Codes, Article 4, General Provisions, Section 44, Vehicle Parking Provisions by amending Section 4.42, Design Standards by deleting in its entirety Section 4.4.4, .4, how to calculate shared parking by creating new section 4.4.4, .4, parking reduction for shared mixed uses and providing for exception. Counselors, discussion. self explanatory <laughs> <Yeah. laughs> Discussion or motion to advance? Motion to advance. Second. We have a motion and a second to advance. Ordinance number 3342, please vote. Ordinance number 3342 is advanced with a vote of five to zero. On first reading, Mr. Dorman, item C. Ordinance number 3343, an ordinance amending the Stillwater City Code by amending chapter 23, Land Development Code, Appendix 1, Form-Based Codes, Article 4, General Provisions, by amending and replacing Table 13, Summary of Requirements for Transect Zones, by amending and replacing Table 18, Public Frontages, by deleting in its entirety Table 23, Thruway Connector Streets, Table 27, Neighborhood Streets, Table 28, I don't know what that word is, it says Wooner. <laughs> <laughs> For today we'll use that word. And Connector Streets, Table 27, wait a minute, I'm back on that one, sorry. Table 29, Lane, and by creating new Table 23, Duck Street, Table 24, Mixed Use, 100 foot right of way, table 25 mixed use, 80 foot right of way, table 26 mixed use, 75 foot right of way, table 27 mixed use, 66 foot right of way, table 28 neighborhood, 60 foot right of way, table 29 neighborhood, 50 foot right of way, table 30 neighborhood, 45 foot right of way, table 31 neighborhood, 40 foot right of way, table 32 neighborhood 30 foot right of way and table 33 neighborhood 20 foot right away by deleting in its entirety map three thoroughfares could you repeat that <laughs> <laughs> really? i still don't know what the water roof is, but i'll find really, out really really <laughs> counselors discussion or motion or 
questions? Motion to advance. Second. We have a motion and a second to advance. Ordinance number 3343, please vote. And ordinance number 3343 is advanced with a vote of five to zero. Takes us to second reading, Mr. Dorman. Ordinance number 3339, an ordinance approving and adopting the Stillwater West 51 Development District Project Plan, designating and adopting project area and increment district boundaries, establishing a date for creation of increment district number two, City of Stillwater, adopting certain findings, authorizing the City of Stillwater to carry out and administer the project plan, establishing a tax apportionment fund, declaring apportioned funds to be special funds of the City of Stillwater or alternative authorized entity, authorizing the use of sales tax increment revenues for the payment or financing of certain project costs, authorizing the use of other resources to pay for or finance project costs, authorizing the Stillwater Economic Development Authority or alternative authorized entity to issue apportionment notes and carry out certain provisions of the project plan, ratifying and confirming the actions, recommendations and findings of the review committee and the planning commission, directing continuing apportionment and providing for severability. Councilors, discussion, questions, motion? Will we come back to the resolution? Yes, ma'am, the resolution will be the next item. Okay, thank you. Is there a motion to adopt? Motion to adopt. Second. <laughs> we have a motion and a second to adopt ordinance number 3339. Please vote. And with a vote of four to one, ordinance number 3339 is adopted. On second reading, Mr. Dorman, ordinance number 3340. Do you want to do the resolution first? Let, yes, that the makes more sense. Mm -hmm. And then we'll do 3340. Well, that'd be ordinance, or excuse me, resolution 16-A. And that's the companion to <clears> this. <throat> okay, a resolution establishing criteria for evaluation of development proposals for projects located within the boundaries of increment district number two, city of Stillwater, it's the Stillwater West 51 Tax Increment Financing District. Mr. Dorman. This is an, a resolution that was adopted by the uh, review committee and uh, as part of the, uh, the review of the uh, West 51 Development District. And their thought was that this would be something that the council could use and, and have for future councils to review with regard to the criteria that were appropriate for evaluating TIP applications uh, that come before the, the council as a result of the adoption of, the, uh, of Ordinance 3339. Uh, these items, uh, as it states in the, in the resolution, are things that you would, these are findings that you would basically make when you go through and, and do an approval of a development plan. No single item is dispositive one way or another. So if, if maybe you didn't fail on one, but you did well on everything else, you're, it, the project can still be approved. But the idea was to just basically go through and have a list of things for the council and future, this council and future councils to look at when uh, doing uh, an evaluation of a development plan that is proposed. Councilors, discussion? Motion to approve. I would like to discuss <laughs> first, yes. Uh, uh, I, I did want to thank the, uh, <laughs> what was that? Nothing. Oh, <laughs> I, I would like to thank the committee for redoing the resolution and adding the, particularly the section about um, wages, benefits, and community involvement. Um, I, I um, understand that there was quite a bit of discussion about how to word that, and I hope that it will be used um, seriously by this council and other councils. So thanks to the committee. 
I was going to say the same thing. I just I did, didn't know if there were certain highlights. I know it went back to the committee to talk about some changes. Were mm -hmm. there some major ones that were changed? And could you? Sh I mean, I for the public knowledge too of what. Are, may have are you been. asking me personally? Well, I know you served on the committee too. <laughs> I did for this one meeting. So. Yes, exactly. Uh, yeah, we so we talked about this in the committee um, specifically. The uh, the last criteria here was discussed, although a couple um, changes were also made at, um, in the resolution, be it further resolved part, just to make it clear that it, it wasn't singularly, singularly dispositive of any of these issues. Um, but the last one about positive social benefit, including wages and benefits, was discussed uh, within the committee. Um, it was... The, the language was kind of tweaked around a little bit to make sure it didn't sound like there was a specific um, threshold that had to be met necessarily, but that, that all of these things would be considered together. Uh, these criteria, because they are all um, things that the council sh is supposed to be looking at and considering, but not necessarily checking a box, you know, it, it did meet, you know, X or Y on there. We, the, the reword was done to make sure that this one didn't have a specific check the box kind of threshold up to it as well. So that was the main um, change made by the committee to, to get to this language. I just appreciate the fact that there's a guideline, um, some guidelines so that we do have an opportunity to look at how the businesses come in and want to yeah. be established there and whether or not they qualify or yeah. we think it's necessary for them to have additional funding. I agree. I think it's also helpful for the public to understand what Absolutely. the council is considering when we're looking at incentivizing business developments, yeah. that, that it's not just a matter of um, a developer coming in and saying they want money, um, but there are a number of factors that we are going to consider very thoughtfully when it comes to deciding whether, whether that money should be, should be spent. And it's so. the same thing every time. Yes. And that's a good thing. I think that's, that's uh, fair. This also creates discussion among the council for looking at, I kind of like the check the box. I know that's not something that we're supposed to do, but um, you know, deciding on a, an incentive district is a hard thing to do. And what I like about this is that we are only voting that we could approve something. We haven't approved anything and we get to approve each and everything that comes through there, or makes an application actually, and uh, we can approve <coughs> or not approve based on these criteria, which I think I really do appreciate the committee for its work. It, it's worked uh, at least six months, probably, a very thoughtful, December, yes. yeah, very thoughtful discussion, and I really like uh, the last edition, which, which you did last week. So I think it gives us thoughtful, it gives us things to consider, and we don't just have to approve or not approve because this is a very hard thing to do. And when we leave, it still gives other councils guidelines. So thank you. With that, do we have a motion? Motion to adopt. To approve. Approve. Mm -hmm. We have a motion and a second to approve resolution 2016-8. Please vote. And this resolution is approved with a vote of five to zero. We will now go back let's see, to reports from officers and no, did 3340. I? 3340. 3340. Uh, on second reading, Mr. Dorman. Ordinance number 3340, ordinance rezoning tracks of land located at 506, 510, 514, and 524 South Lincoln Street, RTM, two-family and multifamily residential district to O office district. Discussion. Motion to adopt. Second. We have a motion and a second to adopt. Ordinance number 3340. Please vote. And ordinance number 3340 is a, adopted with a vote of five to zero. Now, that takes us to reports from officers and boards. Mr. Dorman. Just one item. Uh, I'm happy to report that we received notification from the governor's office this morning that both of the charter amendments that were approved by the voters have been approved by the governor's office and have now been filed with the Oklahoma Secretary of State. 
And of course, as soon as we received that, we ran to the county courthouse to file them <laughs> here too. So everything is in place and we will start the final process of implementing those. So beginning with the 2017 elections, we will uh, start doing things a little differently. All right. Very Thank good you. news. Mm -hmm. Thank you. And thanks to the committee. The charter review mm -hmm. committee, yes, mm -hmm. very much. City manager. I have one item to report. There's a lot happening at Stillwater Regional Airport right now, and I have a construction update. The cosmetic updates to the main terminal are about 99% complete. Part of those upgrades include TSA and airline ticket offices and a ticketing counter and a departure terminal, and you approved one of those things tonight uh, in uh, the consent docket. The new wildlife, uh, it, people are calling it security fencing. Um, actually, wildlife fencing is about 95% complete. Construction will begin next week on the South Industrial Access Road, as well as two additional uh, parking lots. And I would just remind everyone that as of August 23rd, to fly stillwaterok.com. Thank you. Counselors, news. Yes. On behalf of the City of Stillwater, um, I want to recognize two outstanding staff members who are taking on leadership roles outside the professional organizations. Um, Fleet Superintendent John Mays is now the president of the Oklahoma Public Fleet Management Association. And Lou Ann Fisher, Wastewater Treatment Plant Superintendent, recently adopted the position of Vice President of the Oklahoma Water Environment Association. So congratulations to the two of them. Um, I think it's great when you do extra beyond what you do on your normal eight to five or however long you work your work day. So congratulations and we congratulate you on your appointments. And we appreciate your hard work. Even though I'm freezing cold, it's <laughs> <laughs> very exciting to think that on this thir uh, next Thursday, May 26th at 11 a.m. at Boomer Lake Park, we'll, everyone is invited to the grand opening of the Boomer Lake Splash Pad long-awaited event. The event will begin with a ribbon cutting. The water will be then turned on for children, no just children, <laughs> to start using the splash pad. State of mind. State of mind. State of mind, okay. Your child at heart. Oh, children at heart. I want to thank, um, we all would like to thank Stillwater Medical Center, the Stillwater Community Foundation, and the Stillwater Masonic Lodge for their donations to both Boomer Lake and Southern Woods splash pads. Big thanks also goes to the City of Stillwater employees who constructed the splash mm -hmm. pads. And I walked by there two or three times last week and this weekend and they look awesome. They look great. Mm -hmm. they, really they really do. Definitely. And the sprinklers were getting the grass green and there's a fence around it now, which there wasn't last week. So uh, it looks awesome. It looks like fun. Yes. Looks like fun time. I'll probably let you go. I think I'm, I'm showing up. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> Councillor Nahara. Yes. Uh, tomorrow evening, myself and Councillor Zanotti and City Manager McNichol will be at Aspen Coffee Fountain Square from 530 to 7 for our Councillor and Manager office hours. So we welcome anyone to come out and join us and have a cup of coffee and talk uh, about anything that is on your mind or any problems you might be having and if you can't attend tomorrow's office hours uh, or you just don't want to talk to <laughs> Councillor Nahara uh, <laughs> which is can, most people <laughs> you can come on Tuesday May 31st uh, to the Aspen Coffee at Lakeview Point um, and Vice Mayor Darlington and I will be out there from 537 on Tuesday May 31st Okay. Anything else? Oh, I did also want to say, I saw today that this week is National Law Enforcement Week. So if you see a police officer, yes. thank them. Thank you for your years of service. So we appreciate all of our first responders and law enforcement this week. So mm -hmm. Absolutely. Anything else? Okay, that takes us to appointments. Item A, appointment to the Stillwater Library Board. Sally Harris will continue to serve through June, but would like to be replaced at this time. And Monica Turek does not wish to be reappointed. And we have one application on file from Wanda Cunningham to fill the seat of Monica Turek. 
Do we have a, so I make a motion to appoint Monica Turk to fill Wanda Cunningham. No. no. I make a motion for Wanda Cunningham to fill Monica Turk's position with the board. Second. We have a, we have a motion and a second. Please vote. And Wanda Cunningham, with a vote of five to zero, will now replace Monica Turk. And thanks, Monica, for your service. And that takes us to item B, Business Improvement District Number 1 Advisory Board. Sue Presley, Kyle Gibbs, Marsha Forbes, and Jim, McCull Jim McCollum have been serving since their terms expired in January. And they all wish to be reappointed, but there is one more vacancy. Applications are being accepted for the bid district area number eight, which is bounded by 11th and 12th avenues between Main and Duncan Streets. Applications, applicants must be property owners in the district or the owner's representative. So we will be accepting applications for that. And that takes us to item C, Public Housing Authority Board and are you going to reappoint those individuals? That yes, we are. I make a motion to reappoint Sue Presley, Kyle Gibbs, Marsha Forbes, and Jim McCollum. Second. We have a motion and a second to appoint to the Business Improvement District Number One Advisory Board. And they are appointed with a vote of five to zero, and we would like to thank them for their service as well. And that takes us to item C, Public Housing Authority Board, Mr. McNichol. Um, last week you appointed Kay Stewart to uh, the Stillwater Public Housing Authority Board um, from an application that she had provided and did that based on a report from uh, the city, uh, the city staff that um, Connie Stokes did not want, wish to be reappointed. And through uh, uh, a plain old miscommunication, um, Ms. Stokes did want to be reappointed. Uh, Kay Stewart, those of you that know her, is a very gracious woman. And um, in once the situation was explained, decided that she would step aside and give Ms. Stokes uh, the opportunity to be reappointed to another term at Stillwater Public Housing Authority. Okay, and so do we need to vote, uh, make a motion for this? Make a motion to appoint and then... Appoint Connie. Okay, so I make a motion to appoint Connie Stokes on the board of the Stillwater Public Housing Authority. That's all. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Second. 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 We have a motion and a second. Please vote. And Connie Stokes is appointed to the board, Public Housing Authority Board, with a vote of five to zero. And we would also, we'd like to thank Ms. Stokes for her service. And we'd also like to, to thank Kay for uh, being gracious. And we will get you on the board. Okay. Counselors, is there a motion to adjourn? So moved. Second. We have a motion and a second to adjourn. <coughs> Please vote. We are, City Council is adjourned. City Council meeting is adjourned with a vote of five to zero. And it is 628. I call to order the Stillwater Utilities Authority meeting. And trustees, does anyone wish to remove an item or discuss? Or is there a motion for the consent docket? Motion to approve the Second. consent docket. Second. We have a motion and a second to approve the consent docket. Please vote. And the consent docket is approved with a vote of five to zero. Reports from officers and boards. General counsel. Nothing to report, ma'am. General manager. Nothing to report. Trustees. I just wanted to say, I forgot to say this in council, a Woonerif is a living street. I looked it up. <laughs> Thank Whatever you. that is. <laughs> Whatever that is. A living street, right? Am I right? I'm 
getting a, a head nod. You can't see that in the public, but Paula Dennison, <laughs> no street. So I guess it wasn't a typo. No, that's a, that's a real thing. All right, well, well, we'll carry it on to the next I'd just break. like that to be on the record. He had the correct saying. You don't have to go back and change yeah. anything. <laughs> With that information, <laughs> would anyone, uh, trustees, is there a motion to adjourn? So moved. Second. We have a motion and a second to adjourn. Please vote. Yep. And the Stillwater Utilities Authority meeting <coughs> is adjourned at 620, 6.30 with a vote of 5 to 0. Thank you for coming and watching. And everybody have a good week. <laughs>